Foot Clan, I suffered a heartbreaking defeat last night, and uh, well, I'll I'll tell you the tale. And we've also got a lot of waiver wire insights to share with you guys to pick up. There's been some brutal injuries. This is a can't miss episode. Make sure you subscribe. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 19th, Waiver Day. And a whole lot more here on the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore is here. Mike Wright present, accounted for. I'm Andy Holloway. And here we go. Yeah. Tons to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we have injuries. Injuries are bad. Let me start with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't like them. I wish they didn't happen. Football is absolutely brutal. It's been really brutal this year. Uh, Yeah, it has. And last night, lost one of the most enjoyable players to watch one of the best dudes in football the nick chubb injury was not one for the squeamish i have not clicked all of the okay. links i have not seen it because i have been told that it is yeah it's one that you don't want to watch it's pretty intense and i don't i mean like i get i'm going to commend the nfl for this because we've seen too many times where a player suffers like a catastrophic injury and they just keep mm -hmm. showing it and you're like okay man we we got it he's not uh, playing tonight we get it but last night was the first time i can remember where the announcers they they called out like okay our the booth is telling us this is a nasty injury we don't even need to show you uh so like i commend them for that and then you 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 heard the reaction of the of the uh the home crowd because they played clearly played the uh the the replay for them and there was the entire stadium went oh yeah it was it was so it, th that's when you knew if you don't you don't need to see it but it is uh it's bad catastrophic it's the same knee he <sighs> that he completely destroyed back at Georgia we don't have all the details of what exactly happened but they've already. Stefanski has come out and said, "Yeah, he's going to be gone." Yeah, I mean, multiple ligaments and that's what we're and everything in between. So, we'll start there with the the Monday night recap. Nick Chubb out for the season. Jerome Ford going to be a big discussion today on the waiver show. Yeah, ended up sixteen for one hundred and six. Chubb was on his way to a big game. Had a couple of impressive runs. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Yikes! Th this is so. Uh, well, l let me put it this way. Doesn't look like the same player he was in Houston as of right now. It's confusing because, you know, everybody wants to know what to do with Deshaun Watson in fantasy. He's not going to have Nick Chubb the rest of the season, which is a huge benefit to you as a, a quarterback. That being said, some of his secret sauce is the running game. He was the quarterback five in week one because I looked at the numbers for last night. Awful night. Yeah. Um, the best way I – it looked to me like he's just got the wrong software installed. I mean, he's not the same player. He had the egregious personal foul penalties, pushing a referee. He could be suspended. This was a, a horrific performance. Some may want to attribute it to the pass rush, the Pittsburgh defense, which was outstanding. I don't think Deshaun Watson looks like the same player. I have him in a couple of leagues – I made waiver claim uh, choices this morning, some of them to drop Watson entirely, some of them to bench him and play somebody else. 22 for 40, 235, one pick, one bit, bad fumble, one touchdown. And a lot of just bad passes. You know, sometimes you look at the box score and you say, oh, he had a bad game, and sometimes you watch the film and you go, Ugh, what are you doing? Like, you know – 
Uh, it just seems like he's he's not he's not seeing the field like you would hope he is, and he's not throwing the ball uh, as well as he should. Reminds me a lot of last year's Russell Wilson, where you watch the game, and every now and then there's like a good play, and you go, oh, okay, yeah. he's he's still got it. But then most of the plays just seem off. They do, and Kevin Stefanski is not the type of head coach in offense that benefits quarterback passing numbers either. If you remember his one season with Kirk Cousins, Cousins was bad. I mean, like, this was not – this doesn't look like the kind of offense that they're going to just suddenly – you know, Watson's going to be a 300, 400-yard passer. They're going to still lean on the running game. We don't know if they're going to add another body, but it, it was just a really – disheartening performance from Watson and and this team gave the game away in a lot of respects the defense for Cleveland believe they gave up one touchdown the Pickens play two field goals that was it mm -hmm. and they lost because of the pick six and the fumble recovery so moving forward I will I will say I mean it Watson looked uh bad but he does have Tennessee and Baltimore at home the next two weeks yeah, so, I mean, it could, like if you're if you're still holding on for fantasy football, I get it. But the the I'm glad you brought it up because I I wanted to talk about it real quick. Of a suspension is possible. Uh, if you didn't see the play, there was the the hullabaloo and the ruckus of, as Deshaun Watson's running out of bounds, and they I mean Watson starts chirping and you go oh. And and you see the flag go. You go, okay, well, the defender did the, the normal bull crap where they, they got a late hit on a quarterback who's out of bounds. Stupid, stupid. You can't do that. And as the the fight is kind of being broken up, Watson tries to push his way through a referee. I could not believe that they didn't didn't throw him out right there. Like players get thrown out for far less yeah, he touching. He touching tossed of a, ref a referee yeah. to the side. Yeah, like – Players get thrown out just for just for barely touching a ref. And I thought, okay, well, this ref's giving him the benefit of the doubt because he got a he got a cheap shot on the outside. And then you see the replay. No, it was Watson who got, who grabbed a dude by his face mask and threw him down. And then he wanted to fight and go through the ref. So the fact that they didn't eject him, you gotta be on watch that the the league might go, okay, well you didn't get ejected, so you're getting suspended for and the next game. And then he did it again. Yes. He grabbed another dude by the face mask. Yeah. And not like, you know, it was started as a stiff arm, but then you grab, yeah. hold, and pull the guy to the ground. It's like, wow. If he's suspended, they play Monday night next week. Dorian Thompson Robinson would be under center for the Browns. He is a an extremely dynamic, mobile quarterback. That would be relevant for fantasy based on the matchup that Mike just mentioned. Uh, I, I want to get through. We have two Monday night games to get through, so I want to do yep. it quickly. Uh, Najee Harris. Oh, wait. Quickly is not right, the right yeah, transition word there. Very well done. N Najee is. Uh, He's so slow. I think truly. Um, didn't he say he put on weight this, this season? I, I don't recall. I, th I think this offseason he tried to bulk up, and it, it really looks like it. Um I've I've supported Najee. I've believed I, you know, coming out of college, out of Alabama, I thought he was phenomenal. Let me yeah. give you a number: seventy-three percent of Najee Harris's opportunities have resulted in plays gaining two or fewer yards. Yeah, and and, and it feels like two it, or fewer. And when you watch, he really he's tough. He's big. He's strong. It takes a village to bring him down, but he is not explosive. He is slow. Like right now, when he's you know running towards the outside, you catch up to him. And then, yeah, it takes two guys to tackle him, but the second guy gets there pretty quick. <laughs> and Jalen Warren, on the other hand, four for 66 through the air. He's very explosive. He had a couple of first downs that he he just – it was sheer will. So I don't know what that's going to look like moving forward. Can he pick it through the big touchdown to Pickens? Uh, but for, he looked – I mean, he – Yeah, he looked like Kenny Pickett. He completed 50% of his passes. Both quarterbacks – this was not a fun Look, game to the watch. Game Looks sucked. like they had no idea what they're doing. The only the only good thing about this game Don't was the it. was the defenses. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say the Pickens play because that was not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me give let me give people an update of what happened. Oh last yeah, 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 because they're, Papa Josh is in the house. He's fist pumping. Yeah, he's in Deucer's like Alley he's over at a there. New Jersey rave. What an idiot. Mm, um, mm, 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 last mm, night mm. I had Olave and the Saints defense, and Papa Josh had. George Pickens. Easy peasy. 
I mean, this should have been a layup. And uh, it wasn't. You guys were about head, head to head, it was, right? He- it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a toss up. All I needed was Olave and the Saints defense to take care of business. I had a 17 point lead. I was finally starting to feel like, because Olave wasn't involved early, finally got involved, felt really good. One play later, 71 yard touchdown to Pickens. Suddenly it's a two point game. Olave goes in for the touchdown. Mm-hmm. The replay comes out. His foot <laughs> hits the left. Out of bounds line, and I see it on the replay, and I scream through my house, no! Because I knew what was going to happen, and I haven't even gotten to the best part. No, you haven't. So I, I I end up losing by five points because of George Pickens. Not because of George Pickens. Well, no. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Tell us. I traded Mm -hmm. a good trade. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, it was a good trade. Mm. I traded for Zach Moss. Oh, gross. Zach Moss was in my lineup. Zach Moss scored 20 points. Zach Moss is the RB10 on the week. He's the (laughs) RB10. Yeah, but but because you traded for Zach Moss and decided to play him, who didn't you play? Kyron Williams. <laughs> Did he score more than Zach Moss? He scored 26 points, which would have given me a one-point victory. Oh, yeah. Zach Moss caused you to lose. So Zach Moss literally <laughs> cost me the week. I got, <laughs> I got that bum off my roster, and I won. And you took him on, and you lost. I traded for the RB10 and lost because of it. <laughs> that is sometimes fantasy is just fun. It's mean. Fun to see? No, this is mean. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I lost. It's stupid. Fantasy stupid. No one should play it. Amari Cooper seven for ninety. Yeah, despite Mr. not being active. <laughs> yeah, Mister not gonna play. In the other game, not a fun watch either. Uh, Bryce Young looks outmatched. It's why I targeted the Saints D. Saints D decided to give up a free touchdown at the end. My Twitter was filled with people that lost because. Rick. Because of the free, I yeah, had, I yeah. had a great time, guys. Adam Thielen, seven for fifty-four and a touchdown. Hooray! In time for the buffet. It brings me great joy <laughs> to see him and Zach Ertz force you two to make them relevant. Oh no, no. Yeah, I mean Adam Thielen. I will not chase nine targets. The first week he had the most targets. He is relevant. I'm sorry, he yeah, is. Yeah, but nobody played him this game, and if people make the mistake of playing him because of this game. The, the, like you said, it was a garbage time touchdown, uh, you know, where, I mean, literally garbage time. Like, once they scored the touchdown, the Saints just came out and took a knee. It was like it didn't help them. Well, and, the, the touchdown was uh, – he he was six for 50 before that. So, I mean, he, he's still going to be a play. He had, like, five catches no, in the they, first I mean, half. They, they did an onside kick. Sure, I, I guess yeah, – they were, they were still choice. trying to win, but it was – My point is that if you want – let me let me make you do this. Pick, pick a Carolina wide receiver – that you have to start in a PPR league? It's probably Thielen. No, say it the other way. No, I will not, because it's probably Thielen. No, 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 I just meant in the old man voice. Oh, what, that's, that's just my voice. I would start myself, of course. Chris Olave, six, uh, six for 86. Jonathan, like, why I'm saying it's probably Thielen is because Thielen had nine targets. Rookie Jonathan Mingo did have eight. Uh, he only caught three for 26 yards, but the fact that the – Rookie already in his – I mean, he's playing a ton. And if Bryce Young and Jonathan Mingo continue to acclimate to the NFL over the course of the second half of the season, we could see some good things from the rookies. Could, but it's – Bryce Young's problem He's got right a long now, way to he, go. He he's not accurate down the field, which is why I like Thielen, because Thielen is close. He's close to home. He can't get down the field. I can't get there. Uh, Miles Sanders, this so far not so good for Miles Sanders. What's your sentiment around him? This offense can't move the football at all. The volume is still good. The The Saints defense is fully legit. Like The Saints are a very, very good defense. You go back to last year and the first two weeks of this season, they haven't given up much to anybody. Um, the fact that Miles Sanders had 14 carries, had three targets, had the crazy volume week one, to me he's a target. It, not because I think he's going to be special – but people are in need of running backs. He's had kind of a um, you know a lousy week here, and you can do worse than having that kind of volume. 
for a talented player. It's a bad offense. There's not going to be a lot of scoring opportunities. Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders moving forward. Oh, interesting. Ooh. I think I take the passing game involvement of Miles Sanders. Yeah, I I think I lean that way as well. It's very close. I think that's I think that's a good comp. You've got a little bit more explosive. What did he do week one in the passing game? Because he was just three for four in uh, this game. I think I think he was pretty involved. I will I will look that up. Okay. And I mean that's a close one. Miles Sanders in week one had uh, six targets, four for twenty six. Yeah. So six targets and five targets. That's that's pretty solid. Uh, his snaps. Did go up. C.J. Stroud just looks so much better yes. than Bryce Young looks Currently right now. He does. Yes. Bryce Young last night, it was uh, like he 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 passed for 153 yards. I'd love to know what the number was on the final drive where they just gave him. Uh, if you saw that drive, it was every play was a nine yard dump off to Chuba Hubbard or somebody underneath. Chuba Hubbard is getting a lot of play. Yeah, I was going to bring up is, Chuba, which is why I'm kind of concerned about mine. He not only is he he's getting some snaps and some opportunity. The, I mean, that's now two weeks in a row that Chuba looks good. He lo he looks very fast. He was I mean it was only two carries, but it was 16 yards on the ground. He had a a bunch of big runs in week one as well. Uh, five catches for Chuba, so he's he's a player, a lower level running back that I think could I think could start eating more into Miles Sanders' workload. I think the truth is they're just trying to take the ball you know out of the rookie's hands a lot and use the running backs because Chuba's. You know, he was only 36% week one, 37% of the snaps week two. But when he's on the field, they're using him because they're yeah. they're they're using the running game as as much as they can or or, or the running backs in the passing game. So I, I'm not – I mean, I think he is definitely one of those insurance running backs that you could pick up as a stash, but I don't think he really affects Miles Sanders too negatively. Chuba had four touches on the final drive. So, I mean, they were in a full hurry up, we have to go score – and Chuba was the running back of choice. Is he the two-minute drill running back he, there? He could he be. He looks like it. Jamal Williams, uh, hamstring injury. Yeah. Tony Jones Jr. came in, scored two times. Who? <laughs> Tony Jones Jr. <laughs> what? I don't I, remember his full name. I Tony, don't. Tony, James, Jones, Brooks. Is it this guy? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. baby. We're back. Yeah, he's back on the well, team. Isn't there, isn't uh, there the another? answer is Tony, Tony, Brooks, James, Jones Jr. <laughs> is his nickname. <laughs> I thought there was a Tony no. Brooks. There is a Tony Brooks James that's not this guy. That's why that Tony <laughs> Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. Oh, really? Exists. Yes. Yes, this is the one Nothing and Nothing like being only. confused by your own show. <laughs> the one and only Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. in existence. So, it, relevant for today's discussion, we will not have the discussion now because we got a waiver segment, but the running back room in New Orleans there are options for you to pick up. Like Taysom Hill. Derek yeah. Carr, it Could wasn't good. I mean, no, it wasn't a good it game. It was not. He looked Chris very Olave poor. bailed him out on a 42-yard bomb. Chris Olave was – Oh, that catch was nasty. And he was – Olave was – sorry, Andy. He was one foot away from a huge game. Uh, so It was not one foot, Mike. That yeah, was, that that was, was like a quarter sorry, of an inch. A toe. A toe. I'm, I apologize. Uh, but Olave's looking, looking nice. And, and Michael, Michael Thomas. Thomas. What are we – at the beginning of the game. It's me, <laughs> Michael Thomas. No, no, How no. How are you? He's got half a decade almost. To I had the same exact line as Adam Thielen, except for I didn't score. No. Yeah. 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 Get him. Get yeah. Those, he's, those four, old he's, nah, four, man. he's four years younger than Adam Thielen. Doesn't look it. No, he looked good in this game. It was he was the uh, PPR. This is exactly what happened last week, if you noticed. Identical game script. <laughs> Olave ignored in the first half. Michael Thomas was the early target. Second half of the game, big plays. Olave piles up the yardage in targets, ends up with more than Michael Thomas, and and Rashid Shahid has the big play down the sideline. Like both games were identical. I don't know what the play calling is right now, but that's exactly what happened in both games. Seven for fifty-five for Michael Thomas. Yes. And how about the NFC South, huh? Yeah, you got three two and O teams. In the, clearly the most powerful division in football. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the Lions, uh, the Lions have said that David Montgomery is day-to-day. -day, and then they have, And then they've said with their actions that he's not because they signed Bam Knight to their active roster from the practice squad. 
So David Montgomery may be as day to day as Deontay Johnson was before he was tossed onto IR yesterday. The, which the extra hilarious thing being, David Montgomery immediately after the game said, "Yeah, this is probably a multi week injury." Yeah, and then his head coach is like, "No," he's like, "I know no. your body yeah. better than you know it. You will play." Uh, Saquon Barkley, he's going to miss three weeks due to the ankle sprain. So waiver show today, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for Nick Chubb managers as yeah. well. And there, there's just been a lot of injury. You got uh, David Montgomery, Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb, and Jamal Williams, all who went down as wow. presumed starters. So waivers are very ripe. Yeah, sir. and Najee went down in another way. <laughs> so you may be looking for options there too. Kyle Shanahan said it's too early to provide an update on Brandon Brandon Ayuk's shoulder. He was did not practice on Monday. He's got a Thursday game, so to me, there's a high probability that he could miss Thursday because it affords him ten more days of of rest. Agreed. Uh, which could make could make George Kittle more interesting this this Thursday. It could. I yeah. And obviously, I mean, you're gonna play Debo and McCaffrey anyway. Yeah, yeah. It was. I thought that after. Like Ayuk was a little shook up on Sunday. I thought Kittle would do something then, but mm -hmm. he still did not. It was all Debo. But if Ayuk is completely out and now they have to change the game plan, Kittle should be fine. Uh, here we go. Adam Shafter says it's – well, this is not – I mean, what kind of comment is this? It's fair to wonder if Joe Burrow will be available. He's just saying it's fair. Yeah, it is you're, fair to wonder. You are totally allowed to wonder about that. That is, that is Thank completely you, Adam. fair. Jake Browning would be the backup quarterback. Here's my fantasy question. Obviously, if we find out he's missing, you're going to make different plans at quarterback, and you'll know ahead of time. But if Jake Browning is the quarterback, what do you do with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase? Do, are you just taking I the kind of him. like you just play them? Mm -hmm. I play him. I, I, th I think with a hobbled Joe Burrow or Browning, either way you're going to get you know, a 70, well, Browning's probably a 50% to 75% of those two superstar wide receivers, but they're good enough to where you still play them. Just like we saw last week with Garrett Wilson, sometimes it just takes one play on a special talented wide receiver that you don't want to have on your bench. Anthony Man. Richardson's in the Dude, league's like you realize, like if, concussion protocol. No, I'm sorry, but you realize the Bengals could be 0-3. I have already put in my picks for next week, and I do project them to lose. There. Let's see. We got a second four. Monday night game. I believe it's against. It's the Rams. The They're Rams. doing that again. The yes. doubleheader. Yes. Come on. It. Yeah. It, it's not it was a good, awful. It's not a good time. It's really, really frustrating. At least put them back to back. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Yep. I will sit down. <laughs> NFL. I will sit down on the couch for six hours. You. I. I show that to you every Sunday. If you give me the games, I've I proven myself. I, yeah. I've proven my loyalty to the Shield. But it having to go back and forth is so frustrating. You missed so much. I did the uh, the multi-view, and that was del delightful. Because you're, <laughs> yeah, you're on the uh, YouTube you're TV. You're on YouTube I TV. did the most ridiculous thing, even though I could have done multi-view. I had my bedroom TV on one game and my living room TV on the other. I just walked back and forth. <laughs> no, you did not. I totally did. You <laughs> walked back and forth? Yeah, I'd watch a couple of plays Instead here. Instead of and clicking go, the flip yeah. button? Yep. It was just, just getting your steps in. What are you yeah, doing? You know, just <laughs> got to stay active. There was a lot of activity on your multi towel situation yesterday. <laughs> I want to see how many uh, fellow multi room walkers. There I think are. there'll be fewer multi room walkers. What did, what did you do? Did you do anything on the walk? I mean, uh, no, but just you know, uh, just you pick up food on the way. He healthy jaunt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you did that. That's that's funny. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, I what? mean, Anthony Richardson in the concussion protocol. Yeah, Jalen Waddle in the concussion protocol. Brandon Cook's expected to play week three. And then this is this is big news. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley told reporters there is no timeline for Austin Eckler's return oh, from the no. ankle injury. Yeah. But is he out indefinitely? This is not day-to-day. -day. Yeah, no timeline means indefinite. Okay. We just don't know. Could be tomorrow. This is – I mean, you, you you mentioned four running backs. Oh, let me add Austin Eckler Yeah, Austin there. Eckler's on that list. Sean McVay said – they have spoken to a number of teams about trading running back Cam Akers. They, he said that is the direction we're headed. They also came out and said a bunch of other stuff, like they were shocked at his tweet because they had already had discussions with him and his agent before the game, so it made no sense to them that he would say he was surprised because they had plain discussions about what was 
going to happen. You can still be surprised. And then and then the, the second thing was that they said this issue was nothing to do with last year's issue at all. Yeah, no, he's totally cool. Yeah, so, he's everyone, available. Everyone, everyone should want there. him. Dude, the guy's great. So Papa Josh wanted to know, is is Cam Akers worth holding on to to see where yes. he lands? Cur currently, yes. Like what if he went to Cleveland? This way, especially because that is a – it is a possibility. I, I'm, it's not going to affect how I view Jerome Ford, the – this – uh, up in the nether of could they bring Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, or trade Cam Akers? I'm still going to go after Jerome Ford, but you got. I would hold on to Cameron Akers, J I C. Yeah, I mean, when people have been Ron. asking about, <laughs> Ron, yeah, Ron. <laughs> when people have been asking about Ron, um, <laughs> the, it, it is really it, we say this all the time. It's obviously dependent upon who you would be picking up. I would drop Cam Akers to pick up a Jerome Ford sure. if you needed yeah, yeah, yeah. that roster spot. But you don't just drop him because he's benched. Yeah, and we'll talk about the running backs here shortly. So I have some thoughts on the Jerome Ford versus other options because they could bring someone in. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, back with the waivers. So you put the so you put the TV game like you put yeah, the game on in one room I'm still, and the game on in the other room. Is this because you don't you don't know how to do the jump button? No. What well, here's why it happened. I put the first game on when it started. I was just watching the game, right? And then uh, I went to the living room. I put the same game on out in the living room, and because I changed rooms, so I'm just watching. You know, sometimes I'm in my bedroom, sometimes I'm in my living room. It's right next to each other. The next game starts, so I flip one of those TVs to the new game. And then it just it just happened. It just happened, man. And then I was like, oh, I'll just I'll go see what's happening on the other game. Based on how the games were going, did you consider going to another room with no games on? <laughs> I actually did leave the house, and I listened <laughs> on the radio because <laughs> garbage. Now, they're in the house, so just to be clear for the listeners, there's not like the perfect focal point where you could see both televisions. They are literally on the same wall. On opposite okay, sides, so, so you got to go around the. That's wall. a lot of. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's a you know, I I put in I put in the. He work. did his steps. He got his steps yesterday. It's ridiculous. Here we go. Welcome to the waiver wire presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, I think it makes most uh, the most sense to start at the running back position here in the waiver wire, and then we'll go to wide receivers, but. We just talked about it. Jerome Ford is available in the majority of leagues. And so I think for the majority of people, he will be the number one ad. Yeah. He looked good. He he was a workhorse in college. He had 18 touches. And the only reason he came off the field uh, for the Pierre Strong touchdown was because he had just run, I believe, 69 yards yeah. and fell down. Well, and he, on the play, he definitely ran more. Than the yards, yeah, yeah I mean, he, he laterally he, ran, he must have ran ninety to hundred yards and dove in the end zone, and I believe it was yeah. called a touchdown yep. on the play. So I mean, it was it was an awesome play, but dude was tired. Yeah, so no, that was a come on, just give him, ref. I know that's just, what, just give him the touchdown. Yeah. There should be a one bonus timeout <laughs> given yes. to the teams per week. It's called the fantasy timeout. Yeah, ooh, and okay. it's and it's given to the teams to let the guy who just did the long run rest. So that he can come back in for the next play. During that You're timeout, during here. that timeout, though, both offense and defense have to line up ready. You're not allowed to come to the sideline, talk things through. Yeah, someone, only that someone one runs out a chair, <laughs> <laughs> and whoever it is who's exhausted from the play before gets a timeout. Maybe, maybe some fans or a spritzer. Absolutely, someone spray bottle, like water bottle guy, bringing bringing him some water. Maybe a back rub. It's oh, yeah. a little hard with the shoulder pads. He but you sits work in the <laughs> position he would be lined up in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Everyone then, else stays lined you know, up. The, the 60 seconds is over. Guy takes a chair, goes, play resumes. Yeah. I this, like this. This is way better than back the overlapping. You don't Monday need Night Pierre games. Strong. No offense, Pierre. Let's let Jerome Ford he, get the score. He, his celebration kind of, it upset me. Pierre Strong? <laughs> yeah. Because he was too happy? Because he got absolutely wrecked on his first <laughs> attempt. I mean, like. I've never, I haven't seen a running back get stonewalled like this in a long time. Then he gets in, and you're like, Pierre, it was one yard. Jerome Ford did all the work. Go give him the ball. So the running back room, this is your biggest waiver wire storyline. 
Jerome Ford, for a lot of people, like I said, the most available. If you are in a league with Kyron Williams, he is above Jerome Ford for me. Everyone is in a league with Kyron, but if he's on your way first, if, if he's available. That's a good thank you, Jason. Yeah, I just <laughs> want clarity here. Or did you mean like playing fantasy football Sorry. with Kyron? Sorry. He's He is shockingly available in about 40% of leagues still. I know he was a big waiver wire pickup last week, but if these people are, didn't believe. These are sleeper roster percentages, by yeah. the way. Yeah, so uh, a absolutely check to see if Kyron is there. Who? The reason I'm being, Kyron over Jerome Ford personally if. Yeah, and that, and that's just because for me it's it's uh, I'm more assured that the Rams aren't adding a body in the backfield. I think Kyron's our guy, and I think Jerome Ford's probably Cleveland's guy. I, Agreed. I think Kareem Hunt is washed, and they're not bringing him back. I think Leonard Fournette is washed, and he's not worth an ad. But I don't know. I don't know if they would trade for somebody. This is a Stefanski offense. This is an offense that was predicated on Nick Chubb and the running game. And Kyron's getting those targets, so I I agree. Kyron is over. Jerome. Would you rather have Jerome over Zach Moss? Oh. Uh, of course I would. But ask Mike. I oh I, I genuinely I, would. I'll take I'll take Jerome for because here's the thing with Zach Moss is is Jonathan Taylor going to be back I as soon as he is available because he, he was put on he was popper short term IR, I can't remember. But he's missing the four games. And we just we're presuming that Jonathan Taylor and the fight with the Colts will continue Maybe they rectify the situation and they they trade him, or or somehow Jonathan Taylor says I'm not even going to play for the Colts. But there is a chance that Jonathan Taylor comes back, and if that happens, then Zach Moss is completely irrelevant. It's not like if Cleveland adds a player for the committee, Jerome Ford, I believe, will still be the number one of the committee. So I'm going Jerome Ford over Moss. One hundred percent. You you brought this up, Mike, uh, in clarity earlier in the season, but if if Jonathan Taylor were to sit out the season, his contract will not toll if he stays on 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 the pup. He has to come back. So I think right. in week five, Jonathan Taylor's playing football. Now it might not be for the Colts, but I I think in week there's five, there's a Jonathan's chance it will be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's go first three, next three, because it sounds like we're it's a consensus: Kyron, Ford, Moss, yeah, potentially, yeah. Uh, but the next three names off the board, how would you put them in order? I want to give the listeners a little bit more of a structure here in the waiver show of who you'd actually prioritize. So, What's your next three? To me, the next one is Matt Burita, personally. Interesting. Um, Matt Burita, Saquon is going to be out a few weeks. And if you have to have a start this week, I don't love Matt Burita. He's playing in San Francisco against a great running defense, and Matt Burita is just a guy. And the Giants offense, despite coming back against the Arizona Cardinals, has not looked good this year. However... The timeline given right now is that Saquon is expected to miss three weeks. If he does, he is a true volume starter for three weeks. That's important. Even if you need to play him this week against San Francisco, you're not going to get a zero. The following weeks against Seattle at home and against the Miami Dolphins who have been carved up on the ground. So uh, you've got you've got a path for relevance here for Matt Burita. He would be my next man up. Are you including – Justice Hill, who's rostered it's sleeper 58% is what we're seeing. Is Justice Hill included in that discussion, or are you just no. assuming that Hill's not there? The 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 Justice Hill-Gus Edwards combination, I'm assuming that they are gone in, okay. in, in most leagues. I would take Justice Hill ahead of Matt Burita because Justice Hill's the rest of season. Sure. The, the Matt Burita-Craig Reynolds discussion, I think, is difficult. We've seen... We've seen Craig Reynolds be very relevant for the Detroit Lions, and at least in that game that they didn't have a, uh, a chance to change how they, the structure and the plan was going to be for Jameer Gibbs, Craig Reynolds came in and was David Montgomery. Like He was getting all of that work. He gets to play the Falcons, Green Bay, Carolina. We, It's a little more messy because the, the report from New York is they've said, expect three weeks or at least the the beat reporters are saying that. For David Montgomery, it's is he day to day? Is he out multiple weeks? If I knew for sure that uh that Montgomery's gonna miss, say, two weeks, I would prioritize Reynolds over Matt Burita. I feel like that's a really hot take. Reynolds over Burita? Yeah. I do He the, only had four touches in that game. Sure. After Montgomery left. And I you know, this is this is not a situation where I'd want to mess with the maybe the uncertain volume of a second option in Detroit. I think Matt Burita is a pretty big maybe as well. Like, what is the what is the timeshare 
with the rest of the guys on the the roster. I I, I it's I, better I, than I, Reynolds, but it's maybe a worse situation with the line. If I'm what we do on the waiver rankings, so if you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, we do mark. There's kind of two categories of players you pick up, and that's what can make this this segment confusing for some, which is that there are players to pick up and stash, players that you want to put on your lineup. You don't need a start, so you're going to prioritize. Like to me, that's Roshan Johnson, that's Jalen Warren, um, those are players. Devon A. Chain, those are players that you put on your roster and you wait and see what happens. Roshan looked great again, didn't get a lot of work. The offense looks terrible. I still think he is somebody to stash. Jalen Warren, his time could be coming very soon. It could. He's under 50% roster. But the spot start players, certainly Justice Hill and Gus Edwards above all else in that next group. And then Matt Burita, Craig Reynolds would fall into that category. And then you'd be looking at the New Orleans yes. running backs, which is – that's a really tough situation because you're going to get – Wait, you got one week, right? Yep. Yep. Because Alvin Kamara's coming back. Jamal Williams is injured. And then you have an injured uh Kendry Miller. And then Tony Tony Jones looked awful. He He just looked he just scored twice. There I mean okay. So I'm I'm actually I, I'm I'm ignoring that. Yeah. What? I, yeah. I, I, I'm no, ignoring not, I'm ignoring that team for not one week. Me. I am picking up Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller didn't practice week one. Kendra Miller was a limited participant in practice all week two. He was very close to being active for the game. They decided to give him another week of rest. If Jamal Williams is gone and Kendra Miller is active, Kendra Miller's a great player. Um, and if Kamara's not there and Jamal Williams is not there, Kendra Miller, I think, is is someone that Yeah, but I could would, you bet he would get more touches than Tony Jones? 100% if he's active, I think he would, he, he, he would get more touches. Now, it's not a guarantee that he is active, so it's a risk when you pick him up. But I think the upside is worth the risk. Plus, I think that if he comes out and has a good game, because this is a very talented, highly drafted running back who is, I believe, the running back of the future for this team. This isn't like a Tony, Tony, James Jones, Brooks, you know, <laughs> whoever uh, situation where he was elevated from the practice squad last minute because of injuries and then looked bad in the game. This is the guy they want to be the future of their team. If Jamal Williams ends up missing, we don't we don't know the details on on his hamstring. But let's say he misses three weeks, which is common for a hamstring. When Kamara comes back, he's going to be the dude. But Kamara's always shared the load. He's always given enough volume to someone else. If Kendra Miller is the 1B and Jamal Williams isn't there, I, I, I like the talent. So I'm willing to take a shot at picking up Kendra Miller on waivers this week, knowing that I might have to still make another transaction before this Sunday if Kendra's not active. Okay, so you you're saying you're targeting Kendra Miller regardless, but you're not like you're not talking about it from the position of you lost Nick Chubb and you need a running back right now to go. I would start absolutely for you. I would absolutely have Kendra Miller in my list of waiver pickups. He he's not the guy I'm targeting. I'm targeting Ford first and these gotcha. other guys we've talked about who have more uh you know, known health and volume. But certainly, Kendra Miller, I believe, should be on everybody's pickup. And for, for those at home that use the FAB system and not the waiver priority, uh, are we? how are you guys handling Like uh, Kyron Williams, if he somehow is still on your your waiver wire, I feel like that's I'm, – I'm being really – I know your league. So that when people ask us for FAB amounts, it can be very difficult because it's know your league – what are the tendencies of the other players? Who re really needs a running back? But I would be overly aggressive to the point of close to a full fab dump for Kyron Williams and Jerome Ford. I would be close to a – I'd be 85 of my 100 if I had it all for both of those players. Yeah, that's how I lean. Yep. Uh, drop candidates, though. You have to drop someone to pick someone up. So Cam Akers. I would be dropping him to pick up any of those top options for sure. The top options, I would I would be willing to do it. Uh, someone Beyonce, like Kendra Miller, who I like, I, I probably would hold on to Cam over okay. Kendra. Would you really? Yeah, because Cam, the odds that Cam lands somewhere and produces seems so dramatically low for me. If it wasn't for the Browns specific situation, that's like the one spot, then, and I think that, you'll know it this week. Wouldn't I mean he's not coming in there to be the workhorse though? I think if they were to trade for Cam Akers, he would he would be the one. Oh man, not the workhorse. I think, I think Jerome would... Ford would still be the player I'd rather have. Really? Why yeah. would Cam Akers get that I lean, job? Eileen Ford would be the guy no matter what. Khalil but, Herbert, you dropping him? No. 
He's the starter. No, yeah. These are these are names that came up, right? Yeah, no. do, do not dro- everyone out there do not drop Khalil Herbert. Zach Charbonnet. Uh if you have to make a move right now cuz you need a, a a guaranteed volume running back. Kendra Miller or Zach Charbonnet, Jason. Charbonnet. I would take Kendra Miller for the chance that he gets to be the dude this week. Would you drop Jamal Williams knowing that Yes. Oh, Okay, so with Kamara coming back. Yep. Samaj P. Ryan, we done with that? Yeah, I'm fine moving on from Samaj. Sure. The wide receiver room. Oh, boy. Nico Collins right now leads all wide receivers in intermediate targets and receiving yards. He was 7 for 146 and a touchdown, and he rests atop my free agent acquisitions at wide receiver. Is that where e- you guys are at as well? E- yes, I yeah, I would agree. The nice thing about Nico Collins is I don't look at Tank Dell's involvement as any potential negative to him. No, they're different players. They're very different players. So so Nico Collins to me, I think if CJ Stroud continue look, the game scripts, what's Houston going to be in? Negative game script. All year long. Their offensive line is a problem, but they've been able to dink and dunk and, and find this intermediate stuff. So Nico is uh what's the fab budget you'd spend on Nico right now through two weeks? As in that's another way of saying how much do you believe? Yeah, for me, I I I'm in on Nico. Uh, I believe he's going to be a relevant flex style option, so I'm willing to spend around ten percent of my fab. Like for wide receivers, I don't usually go hard in the paint. I'm not one that is going to ever drop, uh, you know, in, unless there's a sp- like, like Puka, a Puka Puka who's a rookie who does something that no rookies have ever done, and you go, oh man, I I want to take a shot at that. Nico to me is like a ten to fifteen percent. What about a rookie who outsnapped Nico Collins? And had ten targets and was seven for seventy two and a touchdown. This would be that's Tank, Tank Dell. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, you could say that that's a reason to to avoid Nico or to avoid the whole situation, not knowing where they're going. But C.J. Stroud, I don't know if you saw this, Mike. Most passing yards ever through a rookie first Stroud? first two starts. He has one hundred nine dropbacks through two games. That is tied for the third most of any quarterback through two weeks. I'm letting him rip it in the last decade. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm being pretty aggressive after Nico and Tank. I would spend more than ten percent on Nico because I think you can start him every week. Yeah, I I agree. I'd go, I'd I'd push over fifteen for Nico. Yeah, probably fifteen to twenty, and then Tank Dell. That's more of a five to ten for me. Looking at the other options, two two Atwell, thirty thirty two percent rostered, had another big game, nine targets, seven for seventy seven. He looks great out there. Yeah, he does. He's and he's a second round pick. That's one thing I want to remind people of. He, he was a second-round pick we all rolled our eyes at. We were shocked that they made the investment on an undersized 2-2 Atwell. But this is – you're starting to see this. Yeah, these tiny guys. I mean, you, you've got jitterbugs. Zay Flowers and Tank Dell and 2-2 Atwell. Josh Downs. Yeah. So there are there are players getting involved that are more undersized in the offseason. We, we reflected on this, the – but the average weight and yes. height of wide receivers has gone down. This was one of Mike's uh, things yep. to remember. Was it the things? To, that, yeah, I believe it was, that was a things to remember episode in the off season of the NFL's changing. The wide receiver uh, weight is going down. Do you believe in Josh Reynolds? Josh Reynolds yes. available in eighty percent of leagues, five yes, for sixty six and two touchdowns. Amon Ra might have a turf toe injury. That is the thing that. That that is the tiebreaker for me. Josh Reynolds is a fine start in my my opinion. If this is a team that's at home this week, they are against the Atlanta Falcons. You say okay, they're going to score twenty five plus points. The wide receiver for two for that team should be rostered, should be played in fantasy. But when you add in the fact that Amon Ross St. Brown, they they have not come out and said he has turf toe. But you watch what happened. You watch the injury, the play. It's it's exactly what always causes turf toe. They put a steel plate in his shoe um, during the during that game, which is what you do for turf toe. So I mean, like he's got turf toe. We know it. They just haven't said it. Um, when that happens, players' performance it just takes a small step down. I don't think Amon Ra if, if if he's active. I don't think you're going to not play him because of that. But it just means Josh Reynolds is more important to this offense. And so I'm fine taking a shot at a at a week, uh, you know, one week start here for Josh Reynolds. Would you drop Jahan Dotson or Zay Jones for Nico Collins, Tutu Outwell, Josh Reynolds, Tank Dell? Uh, not not Dotson, Zay Jones, perhaps. He, Zay Jones for Nico, I would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do that. It's the 
the the Zay Jones injury, we still are. I think we're looking for an update, Kyle. I don't know if anything has come out about that. We might have to wait was till it tomorrow. His knee? I think that's what it was. But it but was, he was in there late in the game. It was, but then then questionable with a knee injury. But then after the game, they've kind of said, yeah, "Yeah, we might have to look at this." It feels a little bit roulette like with the non Ridley options in Jacksonville well, right I mean, now with Evan Ingram and Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. Zay Jones was again a. a a Chris Olave step away from multiple touchdowns. There were four. It's, it's hard to goose with as many targets as yeah. he had, but he did it. Yeah, he did. There were four plays that were the couldn't get two feet down from Trevor Lawrence. Uh, okay, so not Dotson though. No, I'd still hold Dotson. Jaden Reed, rookie wide receiver for the Packers. I am not that interested. He was four for thirty-seven with two touchdowns. I think he's a good player, but I do expect Christian Watson to come back. And it's hard for me to look at the rookie, you know, maybe third or fourth in the pecking order. You know, there's no Aaron Jones in this game, no Christian Watson in this game. I I'm not willing to invest fab on him, but I'd, I'm willing to put a waiver claim in to wait and see. Yeah, I'd like him to be a stash on my bench. This week he plays against New Orleans Saints. I just talked about what a difficult matchup that is for pretty much all positions. The Saints defense is, is, is very legit. But when you've got a rookie who in week two has a – monstrous game is very involved and he's got yeah. a 34 percent targets per route run that's one of the most sticky slash telling stats of future success for a rookie especially a highly drafted rookie like J yeah Jaden Reed should be uh, I, I agree you know Christian Watson's going to come back and that means that Jaden Reed will probably be less involved just be kind of more the slot player for this team but he should be rostered and stashed well, put the rookies in order in terms of who you're interested in them with Jaden Reed, Tank Dell, and Marvin Mims, who Marvin Mims was two for one thirteen and a touchdown. That's my order. Mims is the bottom? Yeah, five routes. Yeah, J Jaden Reed, Tank Dell, Marvin Mims. I love Marvin Mims. I love his talent. Performance I, should lead to more opportunity. Eesh, That's yeah. always what happens with rookies. I really I mean, obviously two for hundred and thirteen and a touchdown. He was unbelievable on his five routes. Okay. Yeah, it's it should, but the the other guys are already doing it in terms of getting all the snaps and the targets. Any more stash names you want to throw out there? Uh, Rashid Shahid with another good week. Yeah, that guy is just – he's an electric player. Uh, the, the only other one I would highlight would be we are – you got to monitor the Odell Beckham Jr. ankle injury. They say he's fine. Yeah, they said it's not going to affect his so, availability. So it's probably nothing, but Rashad Bateman, he, he was the guy who kind of – stepped in for the Odell Beckham role when, when Beckham was missing snaps. So if if somehow Beckham is more injured than they are letting on, Bateman becomes an intriguing type of a player. It's funny because I was going to ask you if you'd cut Bateman for all of these free agent options at wide receiver. Because that's going to be the a – he, yeah. he was drafted. So people have to make a call on Rashad Bateman. I, if Nico, Tank, uh, even – oh, man, even Tutu <laughs> – yeah, that's what, a right. what a world we live in. I, that's how I feel too. <laughs> I think I'd be ready to move yeah. on from Rashad Bateman. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. And if you need a start this week, I would rather start Josh Reynolds. And then the question: so those top three, yes, a start in Josh Reynolds, yes. And then the real question to me is Jaden Reed. And I think I'd rather stash Jaden Reed than stash uh, Bateman. So after that, I want Bateman on my roster. If he was dropped to the waivers, I would look to pick him up. If I've got a player worse than this to drop, but yeah, I would rather have those players. Tight end free agent options. Hunter Henry, if he's out there, 50% of leagues right now, six for 52 and a touchdown. Their offense seems very predicated on getting the ball to the tight end position, so he is the top target. Yeah, he has been awesome. Uh, he was the start of the week last week. Now, he's got the Jets this week, and that can seem really, really scary. So far through two weeks, the tight end position has been okay against the Jets. Um, so it's it's not one of those where they've been shutting that down. I think you could still keep rolling Hunter Henry. You don't expect what happened this last week. The last, you know, the Miami Dolphins over the last two seasons, this this two weeks and last year, are the worst of the worst against tight ends. So it was very predictable. I don't expect him to have a great game against the Jets, but I would I would pick him up. I think he's going to have a solid season. So he's the number one pickup to me at the tight end position. Mr. Sam Laporta, rookie tight end, is. Doing work, 19.6% targets per route run through two games, five for 63 on six targets, and look, Amon Ra, we just talked yeah, about his it. His teammate definitely does not have turf toe. 
<laughs> yeah, I, look, Sam Laporta is a player you should be targeting. Agreed. Agreed. So much better than Dalton Kincaid. And <laughs> let's talk about Zach Ertz, guys. Zach Ertz Gross. is the number one in targets per game at the tight end position. Okay. He is number one in target share on the roster. Okay. These or, are, I mean, sorry, in the NFL. These are sounding good. Uh, he is number two in air yard share. Ooh, he's getting air yards so down he, the field. He was six for fifty-six in in against New York. Uh, he was just missed on a long touchdown. Zach Ertz, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you want to use an old man voice. Zach Ertz is relevant for fantasy. I actually just looked and I see his week three line. Um, it's already been published. His week three line. He's got <laughs> eleven targets. That is awesome. Actually, with seven receptions, very good. Twenty-three yards. Hmm. Uh, so if you're in a full PPR against the Dallas Cowboys, so then nine, nine and a half points in a full PPR in a, in a full wow. PPR. Yeah, no, it's not. That's bad. good. I mean, against the Dallas Cowboys, they're going to use him as the safety yeah, blanket, I mean, but he's not going to do anything special. You could it, do so much worse than Zach Ertz at tight end. Yes. Like Kyle Pitts. For sure. <laughs> oh so, yes. man. Look did, right here, right imagine? here, <laughs> right here, right here. Drop Kyle Pitts for Zach Ertz. Oh my. Drop him. R R Drop Kyle Pitts for Zach Ertz. Screenshot that. Do it. I, mean, I am a. Go to Mike's I am, camera. I am go to Mike's camera. opposed to Look at, Zach no, Ertz. Right here. What I are you am, doing? I am so opposed to Zach Ertz, and yet that might be the <laughs> that might be the right thing you gotta to say do. It. You got to say it. No. Right here. No, I will right not. Right here, oh, Jason's not. camera. I will not. Jason. No. I hate this. Draw, uh, I hate what I'm saying. Say it. Drop Pitts for Laporta. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hate this. Bail out, Jason. Drop Kyle Pitts for Zacker. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh. It's just the redemption I needed from getting a victory stolen from me last night. All right. Zach Ertz is getting targeted so, so much. Uh, Jake Ferguson. He caught it, a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. He was three for 11. So I might, I might. There might not be a ceiling to Ferguson, and that's my concern. Yeah, I, I, I've i paid close attention. I've got him in several leagues, whether he's a stash on my bench or I had him started in League of Record Week 1. Um, I've watched him play, and he is very involved in this offense, and I am I am concerned he's just not good enough. The uh, His snaps did go down. He was a 72% snap player in Week 1, which weird week, that 40 to nothing victory over the Giants. It did drop down to 60%. Uh, your boy, the Schoon Man, he caught himself. He got a touchdown, right? Was, did, I, did I dream that? No, he did. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Schoon Man. I, I want to throw another name out there for monitoring at tight end, and it's not in our list. But I think that's because he was injured halfway through the game, and so you didn't get to see the final stat line. Eight targets in week one, three targets and a touchdown in week two. Logan Thomas of the Washington Commanders. Do you think he'll be in, active? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, he's got to be in protocol right now. He 100% right? is in okay. protocol. This is why I, I prefaced it by saying he's a name to monitor at the sure. tight end position for weeks to come uh, because he's the number six tight end despite the fact he missed half a game due to concussion. He's heavily involved in the offense. And if you watch Sam Howell, there have been some problems. And, and, and Logan Thomas – there was a time when he was really relevant for fantasy, and I, I wonder without that injury if we would be sitting here saying he's the number one pickup because he was on his way to another six, seven target game, and he, he has scored. So saw the red zone target. Just keep your eyes on him. Would you cut David Njoku? For for Hunter Henry, immediately. For Zach Ertz. For Zach Ertz, I don't know. And what about Taysom Hill last night? Nine was, for seventy-five rushing. Yeah, he's a running back. That's part of the 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 discussion for how hard do you go after one of these New Orleans Saints running backs is if they it might know, be Taysom Hill. If they know that Jamal Williams is going to be out, they're going to scheme up a bunch of Taysom Hill runs, and it was and he was good. It was Carolina could not stop it. It nine was nine for seventy-five. I mean, it's I don't know what the Panthers were doing. Like, if Taysom Hill's lined up back there, he's going to run the ball. Yeah, I mean, when, when you get to run as the quarterback, you know, you, you get an extra blocker on the field, and, and Taysom is a great athlete. So he is, I think, a very good pickup because if Kendra Miller is not active and Jamal Williams is not active, 
and Alvin Kamara is not active, then right. I am starting Taysom Hill in my tight end slot. He's a running back, but if your platform has him as a tight end, I he'll probably have 13 carries in that game if Kendra Miller's not active. And, and the goal line and goal line, yes. Which he didn't get in the end zone last night, but he had the chance to. Just got stuffed on the four. Defensive streaming options for this week. Who are you targeting? Uh, Jacksonville plays Houston, but uh, which Jacksonville they did okay uh, tar when you use them against uh, Anthony Richardson. But C.J. Stroud just throwing the ball so much that could turn into turnovers if they are. But she has no interceptions through two right, weeks. That's crazy. Saying. If you are in one of the leagues, because I'm looking at the roster percent and sleepers saying 39 percent. If the Kansas City Chiefs are available, yeah, that's my number one. Go get them because it's not just this week. You get Chicago and then you get the Jets. So if you're in a fab system, I'm willing to juice it up a little bit, knowing that I have what looks like a. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs defense looks. Great. You got you got Chris Jones back. Yes. They're also at home. Yeah, but I'm saying they're number one to me, and then Cleveland's number two for this week going against, against Tennessee because okay. Cleveland's defense has looked outstanding and short of. One play last night, they were great again. Yeah, so, I would uh, throw And I love Seattle. The Seattle Seahawks, they, they're they going to be at home against uh, rookie Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers, and then the Dolphins get Russell Wilson, which is usually delicious. The Panthers haven't put Bryce Young in a position to succeed with the weapons of the wide receiver room. That's been a huge problem. They You watch the, the All-22, and there's no separation from – I mean, Adam Thielen can get loose close to the line of scrimmage, but the, he can't complete a downfield throw. Yeah, it's been disappointing. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket, on YouTube and YouTube TV with NFL Sunday Ticket. It's never been easier to sign up and keep up for all with all your favorite fantasy football players. For $50 off your subscription, sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and blackout restrictions apply. Offer ends 9-19. Full stream ahead. Well, before we close the show out, we've got streaming quarterback options. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's quite the back wall graphic here what? in the studio. Are are you? Oh, you're a train conductor. He's a locom. No, that's not a train. That's a locomotive. Uh, I see. You when got you've got a mustache like that. And that hat. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, uh, Andy <laughs> Schneider once again. <laughs> He's doing real good doing work. Doing some work. All right, my streaming quarterback of the week is Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield like it, taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Let that kind of uh, – you hear Philadelphia and you lose your mind. Mm -hmm. And then you realize they are right now through two weeks the number one matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. They have seven, seven passing touchdowns allowed in two games. Baker has looked really good. And he's the third highest graded passer through two weeks. And he has Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And so I think there's going to be more points here the than, Eagles, than you'd sure. expect. The Eagles' secondary is completely demolished. They've lost so many players already early By in the, the train. season. Yeah, the train just <laughs> ran, ran right over. through Philly. And it was like, why were all the DBs and safeties out there on the tracks? I don't know. But uh, that, that train was, you know, look, stop for trains. They're they're bigger and faster than That's you right. think. That's right. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Um, Breaking news. Oh, no. The Washington Post reports uh -oh. that Deshaun Watson will not be suspended for making contact with a referee for the Browns' Week 2 loss against the Steelers. What? Yeah. So there you go. It's good to know for the waiver show. I That's surprising to me. Yeah. Uh, look, my, my streamer this week is, I mean, first of all, if he's not available in most leagues, but about 20% of the leagues, Captain Kirk, Kirk Cousins, is yeah, on the waivers. He could be there. That is the pickup for sure. He's, well, he's the number one quarterback on the season right now, and his matchup is perfect. But assuming he's not there, I think I'm fine with Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford only has one touchdown on the season. He hasn't been fantastic for fantasy, but he's been fantastic. Like, awesome. You watch the games, his footwork, his pocket presence, his arm. He looks outstanding. Puka Nuclear, nuclear is uh, has been great. I wanted to go Puka in a Cooper Cup, but yeah. um, King Puka. He, he's King P King Puka. <laughs> oh man, Mike. Um, he he's been he really had, good. Stafford he's got he's has got, the third most passing yards in the league. As I was just gonna say, oh, sorry. Um, no, it, it's it's fine. The Cincinnati Bengals have not been great so far. 
uh, this season, I think that I'm fine rolling Matthew Stafford, and you just assume the yardage will come with touchdowns at some point. It's not like Matthew Stafford hasn't been a good touchdown thrower. I mean, a couple years ago, he was up over 40. Right. Well, and they're scoring. They're just – right now, it's going to Kyron Williams on the ground. It won't always be that way. No, it'll go to Puka. <laughs> right. Uh, Brock Purdy, if he happens to be available on your waiver wire, I think he is a good option this Thursday night against the Giants. Nine games so far with Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey together. They average 32 points a game. That's the 49ers. He has the fourth highest yards per attempt, and the Giants are the only defense without a sack in the league currently. Brock Purdy is – he's hes sturdy. He, he, sturdy. he could have had a humongous game last week. I was actually really disappointed. He missed he missed Brandon Ayuk he on did, a long yeah. touchdown, and he missed Debo Samuel on a long touchdown, and we would have been talking about him a lot more today had he – just dialed in those throws. And the nice thing about missing a guy on a long touchdown like that is it means he saw the read and right. made the right call and was like, you know, he, he he was close to that. Are you dropping Justin Fields? No. No way. Not for uh, any of these guys. A lot of people are asking that question. Yeah, so that's my answer. I, I would not. If Justin Fields him. hit waivers in any league that I'm in, I would drop a ton of fab to pick him up. I don't disagree with you. I was just asking the question. Yeah, right. No. People are asking for sure. It's just like uh, I can point to the uh, whatever this was two years ago. Lamar Jackson was having just a really, really mediocre season. And then they figured something out. And then there was there was a like a four or five game run where Lamar Jackson over that time was basically the quarterback one because he has a superpower for fantasy. So don't bail out on Justin Fields just yet. He, despite him looking horrific, yeah, he's a he's a terrible quarterback. But there's like five guys on planet Earth that can do what he does, like as a quarterback with his legs. Or and for you know, fantasy, that's you know, broken. Like Justin Fields, who was terrible for five weeks last year before becoming dominant. Yeah, he was a good example of what can happen. <laughs> uh, per Jordan Schultz, teams connected with Cam Akers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Baltimore Ravens also makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Browns. Yes. Yep. Las Vegas Raiders. Real. Oh man, Fat Thor is not getting it done right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the solution, Ron. <laughs> Ronald. Oh, he's it's Ronald. Cam Akers. Ronald. <laughs> it's it's no, it's Ronald Acres. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't think we have any other updates. Couple things. We're giving away a Christian McCaffrey signed jersey at footclangiveaway.com if you want to check that out. And also, wanted to invite you. This is a perfect time to go to jointhefoot.com and become a part of our fantasy football community. You get an extra episode every week, and you get access to some very valuable in-season tools, the premium player profiles on the website, things like the Stream Finder tool, the Snapshot tool, which gives you consistency for players over time, uh, and a bunch of other in-season market share, target share, valuable resources that are starting to, I don't know, this is like oh, when the superhero gets their power. Yeah, they're gaining power. Because we're gathering data now, and we have a couple weeks, and so like the Stream Finder, very valuable for mm -hmm. being able to look at and say, hey, Philadelphia is the number one defense to target right now at the quarterback position. And and for those, maybe you're curious, like part of our process, what, how do we do a lot of our research? What tools do we use? Uh, the vast majority of it is available to people who support the show. Yeah, we made the tools and then we used them for the show. Yeah. So uh, that's jointhefoot.com if you want to become a supporter of the podcast. Tomorrow we have Hungry for More, the Thursday night preview, and Unsolved Mysteries Ooh. on the show tomorrow. And then we'll get into the starts of the week on Thursday, more matchups on Friday, the fantasy face-off, and the wheel of... Shame! Oh, oh, oh. I love this segment. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>